Let's talk fuel pressure, uh, fuel pressure compensation, one-to-one -one rise and fall. Uh, there's a few things you should know about this. Um, the way a fuel injector works is you have, it, it's just an opening in between a high pressure area and a low pressure area. The high pressure area is obviously a rail, which is has a regulator attached to it. And you have the low pressure, which is manifold pressure. Uh, so there always has to be a pressure differential there maintained in order for the injector to flow. So we take the rail pre pressure, that's your fuel pressure sensor, your manifold pressure, which is your MAP sensor. The fuel pressure differential in pounds per square inch is equal to fuel pressure sensor PSI minus MAP sensor PSI. In the Holly Global file, you'll see uh, a thing called actual system pressure. That's your, your, your pressure differential that you're telling Holly you, you're trying to maintain. So 43 PSI, that would be at atmosphere. At full vacuum, your fuel pressure should be 28. At 15 pounds of boost, it should be 50, your fuel pressure should be 58. So why do we want that one-to-one -one rise and fall? We want it because AE, Excel Enrichment, is based in pounds per hour. So if the fuel pressure stayed at 43, for example, at all, at all operating uh, modes on an NA engine, as we get into the higher vacuum, that differential increases. So you actually get more fuel than what you're telling Holly to put in there. Uh, it's also so that injectors can keep up with boost. So say, for example, if you have Holly 120s and 43 pounds of fuel pressure, if we want uh, 20 pounds of boost, we want 63 pounds of fuel pressure. And then that the, the Holly 120s will, will still flow the same, a maximum of 120 per hole. Your fuel table will be more accurate and consistent. It won't change due to fluctuating fuel pressure. It's important to note it is about fuel, fuel pressure differential, not just pressure. Uh, ben from EFIU video, uh, has a really good video on this subject. Uh, I'll link it below this video. So this is a graph of what a one-to-one -one rise and fall looks like. Uh, you know, in theory, we should we should always strive for this. So if we have, uh, I believe this is a four bar map. Yeah, it looks like a four bar map, 43 base fuel pressure. And at a perfect vacuum, we would have 28 pounds of fuel pressure. Say at 33 pounds of boost, we should have 76. And it should rise and fall perfectly on this slope. This is an example of a log of a uh, really good fuel system. So what I've done here is I've, uh, you have fuel pressure. It is scaled from 28 to 73 and MAP is scaled from zero to 300. If you have a 43 base fuel system and a three bar MAP on your logs, the two lines should follow each other just about perfectly. And you can see this one is really good. And then just when they slam the throttle, the lines deviate a little bit. So I've added a uh, sort of a math trick, if you will, and it's called FP delta differential. And at 50, that means we're getting a perfect one-to-one -one rise. So if we drew a line straight across here, that's what that would look like. And we can see the fuel pressure uh, during uh, turbo boost launch and through the three gears, the fuel pressure is maintaining really well until the throttle is slammed shut. And then for a very, very short period, you get a spike of about 10 PSI over what you would want. So the injectors are actually over, over fueling the engine at this point, very temporarily. So if we look at a point on the graph on the log here, and we note that fuel pressure is 65 at this point, we know it's rising and falling one to one. We know base is 43, that means, the engine is making 22 pounds of boost. So this is what that engine looks like on the uh, on the fuel compensation graph. It starts here, goes through three gears, and then slams the throttle shut. And you got you have to realize it goes through this 
area very, very, very quickly compared to, compared to this area. So this is a healthy fuel system. So why do we want fuel pressure compensation? The actual system pressure in the EFI setting is only for your pounds per hour calculation in your log. And if you're actually not getting that fuel pressure, the pounds per hour calculation will be wrong. Holly is dumb and always assumes a one-to-one -one rise and fall. It does not compensate for it whatsoever. Not all fuel systems can maintain one-to-one. -one. Uh, it keeps your fuel map stable. Minor deviation from one-to-one -one will not corrupt your fuel table. It adds a layer of engine protection, which is always good. It's an absolutely instant compensation for a fuel pressure drop, whereas closed loop is always running behind. So there's a delay there. You will not hit comp closed loop limits because you're not using cl closed loop to compensate for a pressure drop. In fact, a wideband isn't needed at all, at all to compensate. It won't cause a safety to trigger if one is based off the closed loop limit. Some uh, tunes I've seen where the uh, they'll kick the engine off actually after 10% closed loop added fuel. So a fuel pressure drop that adds 10% fuel will not trigger a safety now if you have fuel pressure compensation built in. And you can, you can trick it for uh, better starting for mechanical fuel pumps during times of open loop, such as when acceleration and enrichment is active, when closed loop is inhibited due to uh, coolant temperature or RPM limits on it, during deceleration and times on your two-step, a fuel pressure loss actually will not be compensated for in any way, shape, or form within the current Holly system. So here's an example of a marginal fuel system. Um, you can see the two lines, they're scaled as the same as before, but MAP is always seems to be higher than fuel pressure. In fact, where I've tagged the uh, log, you can see MAP is 134. That's about five pounds of boost. Yet fuel pressure is way down in the 35 region, so that's just not sufficient. Here's my uh, calculation added in FP delta. So we can see we actually, the, the regulators actually set about four PSI too high, but once we start to get anywhere near atmosphere or into boost, the fuel pressure just does not follow where it needs to be. And here is that same log on this chart overlaid. So we can see it in fact is set a little bit high, but anytime they're making power, it's just the fuel pressure is not keeping up. This, the area above the one-to-one uh, -one line is where fuel pressure is not keeping up. The area below in the minus region is where you have too much fuel pressure. Here's an example of a dyno pull where you can tell actually fuel pressure is set a little bit too high compared to MAP, but they both start to rise one to one until the boost really starts to kick in and then the fuel pressure just completely drops. So you can see I've added the math. So we're about nine PSI too high, 50 plus nine, 50 is, is a neutral one to one. And then it's maintaining until about this point where it just completely drops off, probably a, a suction issue or of some sort. And the engine, actually the uh, safety kicks in on this engine. And that's what this it looks like on the chart. We can see where we have too much fuel pressure, but as soon as we start to get into boost, it drops down. So we're making about 49 PSI here. If we slide to the right, we should actually be making about 64. So that's a 15 PSI drop. That's starting to get quite substantial. So what causes fuel pressure losses? Well, fuel systems rarely rise and fall at one-to-one -one perfectly. The fuel and fuel pressure regulator heat up from long drives or less than ideal systems, you know, such as the, maybe some of the fuel lines are too close to exhaust. You have uh, voltage losses. Alternators can't keep up, especially on LS engines. Uh, the ratio I find of the crank to, to the alternator pulley is always way out three to one. And then usually the LS guys are spinning their alternator just 20,000 plus RPM. 
which just they shut off or they die. Or you simply lose your alternator belt, just toss it out the side. There's also other reasons why you can have fuel pressure loss, such as mechanical issues, plug filters, etc., or simply the fuel pump is not up to the task. As we saw in the first good log, slamming the fuel throttle shut or slamming the throttle shut, the fuel pressure regulator cannot move fast enough. And the golden rule is if your injectors or pump aren't lar large enough, you have to upgrade them. No matter, it doesn't matter how much programming you have, it's not related to the tune, it's a mechanical issue. If they're not big enough, you need to upgrade them. So here's a spreadsheet I've made up and I'm just gonna highlight a few areas here. The In the green box, those are, are the two numbers you input and that's it, that's all you have to do. And it builds the entire spreadsheet for you. So the first thing it does is it takes these two numbers and builds the red box, which is your, your map Y axis. Then it builds your fuel pressure X axis then it uses those to build the rest of the chart. So if you change these numbers, everything's gonna change. And I can show you an example of that. So this is the spreadsheet. I've added some instructions. This I will be adding uh, this uh, spreadsheet to, to the Holly forum. Just a little bit of editing there, sorry about that. So if we, uh, we just want a base, basic system. So 43 base, three bar map. Let's just go with that. So you can see how everything started to change on us. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to Holly now. I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm gonna make sure display map as PSIG is clicked. Second thing I'm going to do is add advanced tables if you don't already have them. Default, California Proposition 65 warning, advanced tables do not cause cancer. Anyways, so go to advanced tables, 2D tables. I usually like putting it in table number eight. Enable the table, we'll call it FP comp. And the table type, is going to be fuel flow multiplier. X axis will be fuel pressure and the Y axis will be map. So here's our table, but we haven't populated anything. So that's what the spreadsheet is for. So we're gonna do the Y axis first, click and drag here. Make sure to get all 15, control C. Go back to the holly, click on the top row, control V for paste. Then we're gonna do the bottom one. What you can do is you can just click on the first cell, hold down shift and hit the right arrow instead of using the mouse. Control C. And then we're gonna actually copy the whole entire table itself. right here, so control C, top left cell here, control V. So if we add a heat map, we can see how, uh, how it looks. And so that's done and make sure none of these things are checked. Then I just wanna look at something else. The, so the math, the formula is actually right here. And since it's a square root formula, that means it's nonlinear. So it's not a flat table. It's not, uh, there's there's a, a curve to it. You can see that right there. And uh, so that's important with fuel pressure compensation that the math is correct. And so, yeah, I'll add the, uh, the spreadsheet to the Holly group and uh, any questions, any concerns, feel free to ask.